Hallelujah. Actually, this week I was just running through the word of God. Still asking God, what am I going to say today? Because Mama is not around. I'm not heard from her. Actually, we don't really communicate because of my time of working and uh, if you really know me well, I'm not always with my private mobile mobile phone. So I think my wife is even more making use of it that I'm the other than I myself. But nevertheless, she spoke with Mama and uh, I think on Thursday or not Friday, Mama gave me the word and I was like, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm not even ask her, but what I was preparing was working the same with what she gave as the topic of our month. And I just thank God for that because I don't I'm not doing it with my own power. That one I know. I ask God and if he speaks, I believe I, I hear and I I hear from him. Thank you, Jesus. Today we'll be going through a series of things and I won't be taking too much of our time. I'll just go just introduce you into the our month of build my house. Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord is asking us to build his house. And we'll be taking our passage from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 4. It says, For every house is built by some man, but he that builded it all is God. That means every house that we build is built by somebody. But the truth of the matter is the person who built this house is God himself. That's why God has appointed you and I on earth because he's living in us. We are the temple we are carrying him. He dwells now in our lives. As the temple of God on earth, God has built us so that we can build His tabernacle, His temple on earth. We have worship as a coin to worship Him in truth, in the spirit, where He resides. Praise God. I was thinking about some things. Let me just put, you know, when we are talking about the Old Testament, New Testament, people, some people say, ah, the Old Testament was for the old days. But the truth of the matter is we have to learn from what God and how God has been using his servants, his prophets, even to this day that we have. Most of the things they told and everything that, they, that was prophesied or that, that God has done, even in the Old Testament, in the times of Abraham, in the times of Moses, they all come to pass. It took Abraham years to know the purpose God was using him for. But now that we have Christ in us, we shouldn't take time to walk with God. We should always be prepared to do God's own will. I give you for an example. I want to build a house. I will tell the person who is to draw the plan of my house the kind of house I want. I hope you get the message. Then the person will draw the plan. And if the plan is okay, I will give it okay. I will say, okay, it is okay. I like it this way. But the person who is to, come, who is to uh, build the house, the contractor, will have to follow the plan. He will not do something different. Yes, he has gone away from the plan. If I'm to build a two-bedroom flat, I don't... <laughs> to build a two-bedroom flat, to, to, for example, and the house ended up in a one-bedroom apartment. Does it work with the plan? No. Of course not. And that's not God's will for us. 
the Bible said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, he said, he said God will uh, good, acceptable, and their perfect will. If I, if I have to go into that, it will take us much time, but I just want to go. Uh, let me just take it, give you little examples. God's good will. What is God's good will for each and every one of us? It's just the God's good will for each and every one of us is the general will of the things we want. If I say, ah, okay, tomorrow I just want to, I want to travel to Vienna. He preached the gospel. Hallelujah. If you say tomorrow, ah, I want to move from this place I'm working to another company where I get good pay. Are you sure of it? If it is me, hallelujah. Oh, if I wake up tomorrow, I'll just cook this food for myself to eat. You know your story is not it. It's his will for you. He has provided. Hallelujah. That is the general way of God for each and everybody. That is what the things you want that, are, that he has provided for you. Amen. And then if we, are, if we go deeper to the acceptable will of God. Well, I want to just let you know, this general will of God is not our portion. It's not where we have to remain. He said we are royal priesthood, we are holy nation, we are peculiar prisoners, peculiar people in God. We carry Jesus, we carry his in us. Then we go ahead to the acceptable will of God. What are the examples of the acceptable will of God? These are the places where we start to see people say, ah, I prayed and prayed and I asked God. But the question is, did God say go? I thought about it. For example, a man wants to marry in the church. And then we say, ah, father or pastor, I prayed over it and I'm sure God says she is the one. But the truth of the matter is, did God really say she is the right person? Maybe God is still just saying, wait. But because of eagerness or because he's scared, another man will, another man will come and snatch the woman from his hand. No, 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 Father, I will just pray. We have, I have done everything. Oh, pastor, I pray. I'm the pastor is telling you because I have heard from God, but God is saying you should wait. You said, ah, Pastor, I prayed over it. Hey, this one I'm on. <laughs> At least you are telling God. God, let me go. But God is saying, when you have asked, I will give. But whatever comes, Prepare for it. And that's not our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because the will of God is the perfect one for us. That is, we will speak, we will wait upon him, and we will hear from him. And do exactly what he asks us to do. Look at Moses when he was carried, going with the Israelites from Egypt. He was tested in every way. But Moses was patient enough to hear first from God. You think when they got to the Red Sea, when, you, when, you, when the Israelites were all complaining, Moses, you have come here to come and kill us. Look at the Egyptians behind us. They will slaughter us. They will do this. They will do that. They were all troubled. I don't know how it was possible to face that much to your people. But you know what? Moses was so quiet until God spoke. And God told him, say what? He said, raise up your staff. And the word divide the red sea. That is God's perfect will. Even as he did it, what happened? The sea was divided. And they could cross without any soul. Touched. 
And that is the will of God for us. That we hear from God that whenever we do anything, we become prosperous in it. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are quick. I will not go too far from it because our, our main thing is build my house. I've given so much example and I hope someone has caught something from it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He say, and every other thing will be added unto you. Build God's house first. Build God's temple first. And you know, I always tell people, if you want to no, give something to God, don't give because uh, you see uh, Mama, this person gave you ah, five cards. And then you start to struggle yourself. I want you to take card. Because um, Brother Jude gave 50 euros. I say, ah, ah, you don't you pass me for George. Don't turn the place to a place of competition. Give from your heart. Father, I always tell people, before you come to church, speak at home in your offering, speak on your thanksgiving. If you want to give more, speak into it and tell God what you want Him to do for you. When you give, you give with the heart of joy, with the heart of love, with the heart of thanksgiving. He said, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Jesus was talking to his disciples. And they were asking him, Who is this rock you are talking about? In the same rock of ages, the one who was who he is and who is to come. Hallelujah to Jesus. He said, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not pray against thee. He didn't say the gate. The gate is one. He said, but the gates, I mean, the hell has so many gates. That's why the devil is able to use his demons, sending them through different ways to distract the, the, the people of God. I had a, I had a, a story, I saw, I saw a video sometime. And there was this deliverance, and the person was speaking because the demon in the person was speaking and saying, He always, is the, he says, he say he's this Lucifer, and the kind of Christians he attacks are the lukewarm kind of Christians. And I said, Oh. And so, then he said, Even those one that, those one that call himself Christian, that doesn't does even believe, he said, He already owned them. The lukewarm kind of Christians are the ones that say today I'm a Christian, tomorrow I'm not sure. That is the one he always attacks. And that should not be our portion, please. We should know how to keep the house of God. In everything we do, put God first. If you want to sow into the house of God, don't contemplate about it. Do it because you are doing it to glorify the name of the Lord. What did he say in the book of Malachi 3? He said, he said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. He said, oh, there will be meat in the house. He said, try me and prove me. If you will not open the windows of heaven and rain down the blessings. It's not even putting down the blessing. It's not even showering you with the blessing. Say, say you will have no room to receive them. And you will be so filled. You will have it so much that you cannot even finish making use of it. It will just be there in abundance. That's our God. And I 
it's a behold prayer. You should build this temple. Hallelujah. God is good. I was also going through some passages and I discovered there are so many things written about Moses and how God used, used Moses, prepared him to the, for him to be able to be strong enough to deliver the people of Israel out of Egypt. He said Moses was long considered to be people's greatest prophet, chosen by God, to be the principal administrator of his chosen, of a chosen nation, Israel. He was called to lead God's people out of slavery in Egypt and to be their mouthpiece. That means before God could be able to communicate with the people of Israel, he had to speak through Moses. He was always with them. That was his master plan. But when it comes to giving them message, when it comes to speaking to the, to the people, he spoke through Moses. And we knew that everywhere Moses went to, Moses was able to build a tabernacle. God always came first. A place of worship came first. That's why we are also to learn that anything we are doing, our place of worship is as more important as any other thing. The house of God is our guide. The house of God is our, is our place where we do it and our with the Lord. People keep on saying, they say, God is everywhere. It is not a lie. I'm not saying that. <coughs> Like that is right. But the, the question is, God is everywhere. I can sit at home and pray to God. He will hear you. But I want to tell you the truth. It's this manifestation power in that place where you are at that very time. Hallelujah. Everybody is not sure to say, hey, what is this trying to say? What is the truth? The old the old earth, say the old earth, he rules the heavens and the earth, he rules everything, he sees everything, yes. But there are places where he's acting. That's the same place where you and I are gathered today. Before him, to worship, to praise him, to give him thanks, to serve him. That is where the presence of God is. See, where two or three are gathered. See, where, what is he say? My presence is there. Of course, he's everywhere, but where his presence is, that is where his manifestation is. We should stop using that our system to distract ourselves from coming to church. I can see that when I pray to God. Yeah, then continue praying at home. He will always hear you, of course. But how long will you continue? Amen. Amen. You see? And he was your mouthpiece and has built up the house of Israel into a great nation and entered and conquered the promised land of Canaan. All this weird was directed by God Himself. Moses was telling them, the people of Israel, my God, the God you called, have answered you, and He has sent me to come and deliver you from this weird. Even the people, they, they never believed Him. But wait, when it came to pass, did they follow? They followed. Hallelujah. 
It's like the Messiah that came now. Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, we all received from him. Those things of darkness, the devil wanted to use to destroy those, became light in our life. He conquered every works of the enemy. The house of God is so much important. First Corinthians three sixteen said, "Say you are the temple of the Hallelujah." I was talking last week. I was talking about almost the same thing about you being the temple of God, and that you should prepare yourself in prayer, be watchful, and pray fervently. I believe the as I know. The word pray fervently was meaning we should pray prayers in prayer. <laughs> I don't know how to pray, pray prayer in prayer. You have to you have to pray prayer in prayer. You should at least you should not cease praying. Sometimes we have to change our system of prayers. When we are at home. So no, we are not. Some of us just look up and say, ah, uh, God, thank you for this money. I want to go walk. Go with me. Go in the same bathroom, shower. Shower, finish, great water. Ear boots. Look for bus. Enter the next bus or the next train or the next. Uh, enter in car. You drive, go walk. If you reach for Congo, Stress don't start. The whole day. Finish house in the evening. <sighs> just tired. Today we also want to walk. Won't you want to thank you for bringing me back home? Forget it. Let us change our attitude. Our attitude of prayer. It was grow stronger and stronger. That is how we build ourselves. We build our temple. And that's the way you can come to know that when you are doing things to build the house of God, you are not making a mistake. Of course not. When Dickie was saying this morning that he, he thinks what many people don't even pray anymore. I was like asking why. Why is, why is he saying it's in a land? It's just God's spirit speaking through him. But I'm not even expecting him saying this thing now. We pray too. I would like to call it this too. Too little. It's not even scratching the gate of heaven. Let's go beyond our self thinking. Seek the heavenly way. Let your mind be in the heavenly realm. When you pray, pray that he has already provided everything for you. He is the God that will never fail you. Glory be to God. Said Moses was a human too. God used to build his house. Just as we and everyone who are standing here today. God is using us to build his house. That is why we should not turn back from his word. I said it last time. I said, if you want to walk with God, go through his words. If you want to know God, Go through his words. You want to walk with God? Go through his words. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. That is the goal we serve. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 33. As we all know, he said it also we seek him first the kingdom of God and his words, righteousness. See, and every other will be added unto us. Mm. 
Amen. It was six years. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Righteousness is one of the key things to the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So it makes the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom of God. When we are righteous in the things we do, not just coming to church on Sunday and then from Monday to Saturday will become something else. Righteous in everything we do, in everything we speak, in every way we, or every word that comes from my heart, righteousness is in it. We see people talking anyhow we come and speak righteous things into it. If you, want to tell you, if you want to call you names, or tell you uh, what was a bit, but you know you are speaking the truth. This, we should continue to speak the truth because the truth alone will set us free. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we should walk in the perfect will of God. So that we can be able to know when God speaks, and we, we, we can work with Him, and we can build this house just the way He wants this to be. Not with, not with the number of crowd, but the number the number of righteous ones. How would it be to move if we just come now, and we all we are always in there? I think I'll be one of. Those who will be very, very happy. Amen. To see us there, to see our children there, they're all happy. Hallelujah. We made Zion. Amen. The only, I believe the only, the only fear most of the pastors have is the truth that they have multitude, they have crowd, and maybe they will not, they will not, they will not see everybody here. If for them, for them it's looking look, look like, like a failure. Nobody wants to lose this people here. Even God himself doesn't want to lose his own cre creation on earth, uh, on, on, in, in hell. Of course not. He said he has made hell for the devil and his demons. Not for the, not for the children he has begotten. The hell does not belong to us. We are heirs of the kingdom of God. We are joined to Jesus Christ. Hold on to that crown. Don't lose the crown for anybody. Don't let anyone use mouth to wash you away to take the crown. Hallelujah. Every house is built by someone, say, but God is the one that built everything. He's the head of the home. Praise God. In everything you need to do, you need God. Ask God for it. Amen. Be patient. It will come. You know, God does not walk the way we think. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. <laughs> I've experienced so many things. And sometimes I just laugh and say, eh? Can this even be? The first time I was about, I was planning traveling to Nigeria with my wife and my son. Then I just thought, and somebody was telling me, ah, you know, if you want to go to Nigeria now, you have to look by a car and carry it. I said, I said, God will provide. I was planning to leave February. And we're already in December ending almost into January. And I'm not even see the car on the back. So on Monday, I think January, before I start New Year, we just started resume work. A friend of mine in our company, he just walked to me. He said, Kevin, I had a job buying a selling car. I said, that business, I, I think I left that one. <laughs> I left that one I'm almost how many years ago. He said, but somebody just told me, I said, you have, well, you have a car? He said, yes, he has a car that he was, he has parked almost how many years somewhere. I mean, I was looking, I said, okay, I'm going to have to mark my check car. Okay. That week was only running, I think on Monday, maybe on Friday, 
He called me, he said, what about the car now? You want to come and check? I said, okay, I'm coming. And I went with a friend. I said, well, let's go and check the car. He said, okay, let's go and check the car. He says, Opel, Astra, Kobe. Me, I'm planning to go to Nigeria. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not even standing. All of us together. And I said, okay, let's go. I got there. I saw the car. Silver metallic, shiny, nice car, okay? Alloy wheels, automatic. Okay. This one, if you want to say this car, I very shiny. I said, well, God knows best. Then I asked him, I said, how far? And he said, yeah, how far? He said, the he said, will tell me the truth. The car has been standing almost a year plus. You could even see the snow from last year on it. Stand. He said, the only thing he will tell me, the battery may not start, but if he puts his own listing, maybe we can. I said, let us try it. We just plug head to head, keep the car. One hand, the car starts. I said, okay. Challenge the started. And he was sounding very well. I checked the kilometer. If I'm not mistaken, 63 to 67 kilometer. Fuel, benzene. AC was working fine. I said, ah, okay. I said, okay, challenge don't come. Then I asked him, I said, how much would this car cost you? He said, ah, cafe guild. I thought he was joking. He said, cafe guild. So, you know, he's telling me cafe guild. I just threw my side pocket out of shape. I said, I just told him, I said, you'll take. He gave me 100 euros. He said, take, 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 take. Just sign the contract. Give me. I said, ah. Then my, my friend was telling me, he said, I said, you have to I said, hey, let him have it. This car, I will ship this car. This car, I will drive it in Nigeria. My friend said, no, Salah, 800, you'll get the money. I said, hey, hey, not me now. I would tow the car home. Every day I was going to start the car, one hand, he starts. He said, my wife, no, we went to Brennan, we bought everything we have to buy. We went to the supermarket, bought everything we needed to. Even even what I wear would drink for Nigeria. It was inside that car. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The car got to Nigeria for work. Cost of the economy. My, my, my mother was unable to discharge the car from because they said they want to pay millions for the car. My mother said, see, my mom said, sell the car. I said, I'm going to sell that. <laughs> Leave the car. I know what in that car carry. Yes. I, I didn't I didn't say I didn't ask God, but He was just blessing me with this one now. I understand. Be patient. Be patient. So I'm come and tell you, ah, you know, I just go buy one car, you just sit down, just make three hundred euros. You say when? I said that you as you as you leave for church. Then tomorrow you you will not come. You don't come to church again because somebody will buy car for on Sunday. <laughs> it's true. They are trying to pull you out of the church, but don't forget, if God wants to do it for you, you can buy the same car, maybe the person that for 700, you buy for 100 euros, you can sell it for the double of the money when you tested the car. That's how God works. That's the same car I'm telling you now. See, tomorrow, my mama is in heaven. She didn't cut. When I got to Nigeria, I know, see, those who don't drive us, they drive from Lagos to Benin. They scatter, they finish the break. Well, the disconnected AC, my wife said, ah, I said, this car, she was telling my mother how the, the mom can say, she, she didn't even want to understand. I said, no, 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 no complain. Whatever it cost, I think I spent 100 and then, that was, I'm talking about 11 years ago, I spent almost 120 or 150,000 naira on the car again. For new brakes, new brakes, new AC, everything inside the car to, to put the car in order. The same car we drove from Benin to Ilori. I didn't like I drove the car myself from Benin to Ilori. My mother asked me, you know, I said, don't worry. Local champion. I know, I know how, how many times I was, I don't, I don't drive that, 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 that road. Oh, Map of Nigeria day for a year. <laughs> I drove the same car. God's own favor. God's own perfect will. She was speaking to today, she's still driving the car. She has, she has never called me one day today, my, my son, an uh, engine, get problem. Oh, eh, eh, one tire bust. No. If God blesses you, it is forever. No one can take it away from you. But you know that 
even till now, my main key was always sowing into the kingdom of God. Even when it seems things are getting so tight. You know, I, I don't know sometimes, I, I, I think I feel it's even time things are making so tight, I give more. It's like, God, just take, take them, no, take. Because I know when you bless me, you bless me even more than what my expected blessing. You give me too much. When you do something, do it because you want to bless the house. You don't want to bless God. Hallelujah. Yeah. I thank God for everything. I, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, uh, I don't know how to really say I, I appreciate everything you've done. And that's which we still here to do. Glory to God. Yeah. Our God will never fail you all. Amen. He will never fail you all. That's your heart's desire. I pray today that he has released the blessings today. He has released that grief in your heart and given you blessings. That thing you are still searching for, you will get the one that will give you rest of mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Let him do his work. Just look upon him. Only God can do things that man cannot do. We also we always see only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do. Hallelujah. We should not be taking the songs we sing for granted. Get the message. Don't take the word of God for granted. Get the message. Sometimes, if you are reading through the Bible, you just see that some, sometimes he's speaking to you. You are just reading glad. It may look, ah, then Moses went, nah, nah, put your name sometimes in that, in that, in that place. God can also speak with you because his spirit lives in you. When Jesus was living, he said, he said, he said, he said, I will go, say, but I will give you a comfort. That is the Holy Spirit. He didn't leave us empty handed. It's we that are going to decide if we want the Holy Spirit to stay in God's or not. But I believe each and every one has got the Holy Spirit. So let God continue to speak to you. That is the mission he had. He has come as man on earth. He has said everything about the earth. He felt the same thing we are feeling. Pain. He felt it. Joy. He felt it. That was the reason why he came as man also. Because the earth will say, nah, God now, God now. Then they can. We'll be ordinary man. Of course we are not ordinary. Amen. We are not ordinary people. Because the ordinary people are the ones the devil can get in touch with so fast. I used to like the song from uh, my brother, my friend, or my brother, testimony. He said, 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 he he said, 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 he pray, he pray abnormal kind of prayers. That is the kind of prayer the devil does, does not understand. When you speak in tongues, they are abnormal kind of prayers. The devil does not understand it. Sometimes you have to really hold on, hold on to God. Let Him tell you what to do. Now He's asking us this morning that we should build His house to build his house because he is the builder of each and every one. He has given us this opportunity. We should go into the world and preach the gospel. He didn't just let him go that way, but he sent the Holy Spirit to them. And they can baptize the people in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
see our brothers and sisters out there, we should speak the word to them. They should worship in spirit and in truth. And I pray that God himself will not let us down.